In this session, we'll try and understand the motor parameters determination. How we can determine the parameters of induction motor of uh, using different tests. So, as we have already explained that the equivalent circuit of a induction motor is somewhat similar to that of an equivalent circuit of a transformer. So the tests that we perform to determine the machine parameters are also somewhat similar. Uh, the first test is no load test. Similar to no load test, we have an open circuit test in case of transformers. What we do in case of a no load test is that uh, we perform this at rated voltage and secondly we keep the machine unloaded that we do not apply any load to the induction motor. Now since we are not applying any load to the induction motor the rotor speed will be approximately equal to the synchronous speed of induction motor with the rotor speed equal to the synchronous speed of induction motor we can say that s which is the slip of the induction motor given by ns minus nr over ns is approximately zero it will not be zero it will be approximately equal to zero uh, now we have the induction motor equivalent circuit This is the equivalent circuit of the induction motor under normal operating conditions. Now here we are assuming under uh, no load test that the slip S is nearly zero. So the resistance R2 by S becomes infinite. Infinite resistance uh, means we have an open circuit at this point. So our circuit will reduce Once we assume our slip is zero, R2 by S becomes infinite. Slip is approximately zero, R2 by S is approximately infinity. That means an infinite resistance is offered by this path. That means no current will flow through this path. Uh, in other words, an open circuit this part of the circuit is open now. We will also combine the resistances RC, R friction and R winding as one resistances. Uh, so our equivalent circuit, uh, our equivalent circuit in this case is finally as shown here. Now we can use this equivalent circuit to calculate the parameters R1, X1, and XM. So our Z equivalent of this circuit is V phi by I1 uh, I1 at no load. X that is nothing but X1 plus XM, where we are assuming that R1 and uh, the the resistances are in this case negligible as compared to the in uh, reactances we have already described that xm plus x1 is much larger than the resistance r1 uh, so we can say that in this case z equivalent will simply be the voltage v5 divided by i1 at no load uh, we this our circuit diagram will look something like this is our circuit diagram uh, so from the we are performing a test here so using the watt meters using the ammeters and the volt meters we can take the power uh, uh, power current and voltage readings uh, of this induction motor so at no load we are calculating both the uh, input power as well as the 
no load power uh, no load current flowing in this circuit so since we know uh, the input voltage and we know uh, the no load current we can calculate the parameter x1 plus xm the second test that we'll be performing uh, is the block rotor test block rotor test is somewhat similar to the short circuit test of that's performed on transformers uh, so what we do in this case is we block the rotor blocking the rotor means omega r is zero or we can say s that's ns minus nr divided by ns if nr is zero s will be equal to one uh, secondly we apply a voltage such that uh, rated current starts to flow so if s is equal to 1 our equivalent circuit will look something like this where r2 by s uh, will now simply be equal to uh, r2 because s is equal to 1 uh, again we know that xm is much larger than r2 plus jx2 and rc is much larger than r2 plus jx2 so we can assume that negligible amount of current is flowing from this path uh, so we can basically assume these are this is again an open circuit here all the current is concentrated through this path only so using uh, circuit analysis we can find out uh, the different parameters uh, x1 plus x2 r1 plus r2 uh, from the known measured values of voltage current and power these are the equations uh, we have measured the value of voltage we have the measured value of current uh, so using this we can find out the impedance the block rotor impedance now the block rotor impedance is simply uh, r plus jx resistance plus j times the reactance so magnitude of z cos theta will give us r1 plus r2 magnitude of z sin theta will give us x1 plus x2 So the block rotor test gives us the values of R1 plus R2 and X1 plus X2. It does not give us, it still does not give us R1 separately and R2 separately, X1 separately and X2 separately. Moreover, note that the block rotor test, it is performed at a frequency much, uh, it's usually performed at a different frequency from that of the rated frequency of the machine. Uh, usually this value is around one fourth of the rated frequency now why uh, this is done uh, we know that the values of the rotor uh, rotors effective resistance and the leakage in inductance uh, at lower frequencies uh, corresponding to smaller slips will differ appreciably from their values at normal frequency so we use smaller values of frequency uh, so that we get much more accurate results as compared if we do at normal frequency uh, in that case uh, x1 dash and x2 dash that we are obtaining this is obtained at the frequency at which we are performing the test if we need to uh, calculate the values of these at rated frequency that is at uh, 50 hertz say for example we will need to calculate x1 at rated frequency it will simply be x1 dash into rated frequency divided by the test frequency so if we are performing the uh, experiment at 15 hertz 
while as the rated frequency is 50 hertz so whatever value we have obtained of x1 dash we'll multiply it with y 50 by 15 so that we get the actual value of x1 now from here we actually got x1 dash and x2 dash the summation of these uh, in most of the cases in general the induction motors are designed in such a fashion that x1 is equal to x2 in that case x1 uh, will simply be x l r by 2 so that will also give us the value of x2 now to obtain r1 and r2 from this equation we need to perform yet another test that's known as the dc test now what we do in case of a dc test is that we apply a dc voltage across any two phases of the induction motor this will be the circuit diagram of a dc test what we are doing is we are applying a dc voltage uh, across any two phases we are this phase and this phase we are applying dc voltage across these uh, now since at dc voltage the induction motor will not be working uh, there will not be a rotating magnetic field produced uh, since there is no rotating magnetic field there is no rotation also at dc uh, the flux leakage reactance is extra the inductances they will be uh, shorted they will be considered uh, the values of inductances will be zero so we are only left with the resistance of the stator windings uh, so we can use simple equations uh, where Looking at the circuit diagram, a voltage VDC is applied across two resistances. Uh, they are in series, 2R1. So 2R1 is nothing but VDC by IDC, where VDC and IDC will be calculated using voltmeter and ammeter. So R1 will be calculated as VDC divided by 2 IDC. And since uh, in the block rotor test, we have already calculated RL, uh, the block rotor resistance equal to R1 plus R2. Uh, so using that equation we can calculate the value of r2 as well uh, so from the dc test we can calculate the value of r1 substituting that in the block rotor test we can get the value of r2 from the block rotor test we were also able to calculate x1 and x2 uh, from the no load test uh, we are able to calculate the values of xm uh, x1 plus xm rather since we have already calculated x1 from the block rotor test we can substitute that here and calculate the value of xm so using uh, the no load test we can calculate the shunt parameters of the induction motor that's xm and using the block rotor test we can calculate the series parameters that's x1 x2 and r2 and dc test can also be used to calculate one series parameter that's r1 of the induction motor uh, so using these three tests the no load test the block the block rotor test and the dc test we can obtain the parameters of this system and also the uh, wattmeter readings in case of the no load test since we are only concerned with the shunt parameters in case of no load test the wattmeter readings in this case will give us the core losses while as in case of the block rotor test uh, the wattmeter readings will give us the copper losses the sum uh, the uh, combined copper losses of the induction motor that's the rotor copper losses plus the stator copper loss of the induction motor uh, so in short no load test it's similar to open circuit test of uh, the transformer where we perform it at rated voltage and no load such that slip is nearly equal to zero and we can calculate the values of x1 plus xm in case of block rotor test uh, we block the rotor such that omega r the speed is zero slip becomes one uh, a rated voltage uh, a voltage is applied such that rated current flows through the stator windings uh, we can obtain the sum we can obtain r1 plus r2 and x1 plus x2 since x1 and x2 are nearly same by design principle so we can easily calculate x1 and x2 substitute that in no test we can obtain xm uh, obtain r1 from the dc test 
by applying a DC voltage across any two phases of the induction motor, uh, we'll get the rated value of uh, the system. We can get the rate. We can get the value of R1. Uh, so these are the different tests of induction motor. In the next next session, we will see uh, how we can control the speed of induction motor.